but I met him. So God gives him long life and continue to give us his wisdom and leadership. Okay. He's a person also who experienced something that I also experienced in my life. Yesterday when you talk about covert prison, is a political where detention where political detainees are kept. He was there. And I know how bad that place is because of myself I was there. When the Ingas or Jabal Botani or Umar Bashir came up, I was taken there, so I know the place where he was. And I saw his name on the wall. <laughs> Go to one there before he leaves, write his, write his name or her name on the on the wall. So you could read the name of uh, Sadiq al Mahdi, the name of Jamasan, the name of Dembasioni, whoever passed there, his name is there. If you go there next time, or you will not go there. Luckily, we are not going to establish cover in Yuba. <laughs> These are the reforms that we need. <laughs> we don't have one, don't want to have political detainees in Yuba. <laughs> and we never have. This is very important. So he is somebody who has struggled. And that's why the president recognized him to, con to join the Korean Bashar and then raise our flag in the UN. That is history for younger people to know. And the most important is that their lives still continue. There is life after politics. And this is missing in South Sudan. He's now living very much, very good life. After politics, right? And this is what I'm planning, so I want to also plan for my retirement early to live good life after politics. You <laughs> leaders or politicians think that there is no good life after politics because of insecurity, financial insecurity. There's nothing beyond that. So thank you very much. I can go on and on, on to, to calm his achievements. Him, somebody like Uncle Buona Madwan and others have really contributed. So thank you very much. Let me also appreciate you all of, all of you that have spent the last two days or three days in this conference. Your being here is very important and shows that you are really serious looking for solutions to the conflict in South Sudan. And diaspora are very important component that have contributed to the liberation of South Sudan. Because of you, because of your coming here, our Americans and our Australian friends and Canadian friends became aware of the problem of South Sudan. And you voted 100% for the liberation of South Sudan, or independence of South Sudan. So we appreciate that. Let me also appreciate our American friends and other friends who have also contributed to the liberation of South Sudan and to continue to support South Sudan. The last meeting we had with the State Department when the Senator Kerry called us to attend, he said, you South Sudanese don't sign the agreement and run away from the agreement. You must implement the agreement. You must stop fighting. But he said, he had one important thing, and that is that America will continue to defend us of South Sudan. 
and America is not going to let South Sudan down because America is not going to be the creation of South Sudan. Thank you. And he said, we have a stake. We have a stake in the country. But we want that they will not support us if we don't behave well. So we need to behave well so that America continues to support us. And what is required from us, the opposition and the government, is to continue to dialogue about peace agreement. To continue to commit ourselves to the peace agreement. This peace agreement is difficult peace agreement. Why is it difficult? Because it has not given any side in the peace agreement all what it wants. The rebels wanted to remove the government, regime change, they did not get it. We wanted to crush the rebels, we did not get it. Then this is a peace agreement. The rebels continue to exist and the government continue to exist. And they should be all of them, they have now become partners in this agreement, and then they have to implement this agreement. That's a fact. When the president signed this agreement, I was in Juba. When he came from Addis, why did he, come, did, did he go to, back to, to, to Juba before he signed this agreement? Because he wanted to rally people of South Sudan behind the peace agreement. When he came back, when he went back to, to Juba, he talked to the parliament. He talked to the civil society. He talked to the, uh, the council of ministers. He talked to the SPLA. He talked to everybody about the necessity that he should sign this peace agreement. And when I met him before I left this place, he said he signed this peace agreement because he wants to stop the dying and the suffering of people of South Sudan. <clears throat> he said, I am a commander. I led people to war in, 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 uh, in a Nyanya world. 1955 to 1972, and also 1983 to 2005. He said the most difficult decision that you make as a commander is to ask a person to go and fight. That's the most, thing, most difficult thing. Why? Because the return of that person uh, is 1% the chance of that person to return alive. So he does not want to continue sending more young boys and young girls to the front to go and die. So he said he wants to stop the dying and the suffering of the South Sudan. He also added that he listened to the voices of the region. He got, he listened to the voices of the international community. Why? Because the problem of South Sudan is the problem of the region. South Sudan is a neighbor to six countries. And when your neighbor is in crisis, you too is in crisis. So when South Sudan plan into crisis, all the regions suffer. I was the Minister of Trade. I was the Minister of Petroleum. When I went to Uganda as a Minister of Trade in 2012, the trade balance between South Sudan and Uganda was 600 million a year, the biggest. 600 million a year going to you. Uganda, before the war started. Wow. Wow. Now, how much is it going? Maybe one million, two million dollars a year. So, farmers in Uganda are suffering. Manufacturers are suffering. 
Those who have sent their, school, their, 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 their children to the houses and the owners of the, those houses are, are suffering because rents for three, four months are not being paid. And you are occupying a house of a Ugandan, for instance. And farmer is stuck with these crops that, that were going to South Sudan. He's stuck with the meat. So, Uganda is suffering because of South Sudan. The same thing to Sudan. According to the oil agreement, I was in the midst of oil uh, before, we are supposed to give Sudan $3 billion as a gesture for allowing us to go. Can you imagine this? <laughs> How do you call it this in black men? Because we wanted independence. So the international community told us, for you to be safe, to be independent, pay them 2.3 or 2.2 million dollars. I was in the whole agreement, uh, the power negotiations. Billion. 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 You will not know it. For us to be free. So people pay for the freedom with their blood and the money. We part of our freedom. <laughs> blood and money. And this advice from the international community. And we accepted it. Now we are not paying Sudan 3 billion or 2 billion. Where are we going to get it from? Because the oil has been shut down. The entire unit fields produce zero. The oil production in Upper Nile, Maluk area, has dropped to one third. But also, the prices of the oil, of the oil yeah, have gone down. So Sudan is also suffering. The same thing with Ethiopia, the biggest country that is investing in the hotels in South Sudan is Ethiopia, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Most of the hotels belong to Ethiopians. Mm -hmm. Ethiopian airline used to, 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 to fly four, four times a day to Juba. Now they're flying two flights. Because nobody is traveling. They are the dollars. You see? Now the trade between South Sudan and Sudan, you know, it has gone back to the battery, all trade. They bring the goods, they sell, no dollars in the market. What do they do? What do they, do? they buy the cows that my friend said, now we should get it all. These are the cows that they're buying. Along the border, that is 2,000 kilometers long, from Raja up to Greek with the Mazin uh, to Upper Nile. This is right now between Sudan and, and, and South Sudan. They bring the goods, they don't have dollars, what do they do? They, they buy the, the, the cows. So these cows are also economic, economic mode of, or means of trade, isn't it? And also contribute to the livelihood of the communities. One thing I can say about these cows, and Uncle Vizioni can uh, concur with me, is that the first guns that were bought in the Nyanyawan were bought by cows. <laughs> cows used to be driven from all the, the corners of South Sudan by the Nyanyawan eh, to send it to Uganda, send them to Uganda, send them to DRC, send them to Central Africa, Zaire, and they get the guns, the shoe. The cows. The cows contributed to the liberation of South Sudan. <laughs> the same thing in the SPLA. Cows also were gathered from the communities to support the thousands of the armies that were going to be trained in Addis Ababa, I mean in Ethiopia. Like those who were, were going from Baragaza, from my, my area, from Mawil, up to Ethiopia, Bongo. What could they eat on the road? It is the cows. It is the cows that they drive with them. Some, 
Some cows finish on the road, they go to another area, they get cows, and they continue to, <coughs> to bongo, turning the circus. So still cows contribute to the mission, to appreciate the, the cows. So cows and women also, they, and women, even women, contributed very much. <laughs> standing alone, the North would have abrogated the peace agreement. Like what they did, what is above agreement. Why did they abrogate the peace above agreement? Because we didn't have a standing force that was, was threatening uh, anybody to mess up with that peace above agreement. So SPLM was a standing force to guarantee the liberation of South Sudan. <laughs>
Now, what we are doing, it is like, when we talk about SPLF, it is like when you marry a, a beautiful woman, a beautiful girl, and brings you uh, children, good children. After that, say, oh, I don't want you, I divorce you. Is that a good thing? <laughs> so SPLM delivered. SPLM delivered. Now we want to say, okay, class finish. We don't want you, go. It is. Okay, make SPLM better than it is now. If you think that there are things that are not good, make them better. And all of us want to make SPLM better. And all of us want to make South Sudan better. Because if South Sudan is better, we too will be better. SPLM, SPLA exploded in Afanai, in Bor, and Ayut. Kevin Okwanyin and William Yuan. One is in Nuer and the other is was Dinka. Firstly, both of them are, are, are dead. And these are found members of the SPLA, SPLA. But let me say, also say this something that was mentioned here. Danyana one exploded in Torit. And all of us doing Anyanya one. Yeah, led by Equatorians. Because it started in Equatorian. So logically, Equatorians should be more than anybody else. But all South Sudanese, we joined, we joined Anyanya one. We didn't say that it is an Equatorian movement. Nobody will say that it was an Equatorian movement. We joined it. I will deliver the 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 yes, and I want delivered Addis Ababa agreement. Lago went to the army, and Abdelia became the president of South Sudan by appointment. Mr. Uh, professor, yeah. by the appointment. When the Dinkas, the Equatorians, the Munukulu got fed up with Abdelia, they sacked him. Who did they bring? They brought Lago from a minority tribe that was democratic process that brought Lago. And I participated in that election. I was 18 by then. 1978. <laughs> so Lago was not elected by Equatorians alone. He was elected by all South Sudanese. Majority were Dinkas, that's what Dinkas are doing over here. The South Africa here and the Broad Lago, who is from a minority. Why? Because he's a nationalist who brought Addis Ababa agreement. And when Addis Ababa was agreement, that's why the South Sudanese Broad Lago. Why? Because Addis Ababa agreement that time was shaking. So people thought, okay, let's bring somebody who, who signed that agreement because he can confront Nimeri. So Lago was elected from minority. So maybe these are some of the things that we are missing now in our history. I am not defending Nuer or, or Dinka, but maybe some young people are here who don't know this history. Because it's not available there. Again, politicians went around, the issue of corruption, who find you below, what do you they have uh, discovered corruption against Lago. That Amuna, Madame Amuna, got money from somewhere, from Kuwait or from maybe our uncle knows it better. <laughs> so people get up and then uh, the, the kid Lago, how it? That was accountability we are talking about now. So what that was false, it was false or reality, there was accountability done and Lago was And then, Abelia came 
That is that, like Putin and and the other one is who's called one? Medvedev. Okay. Abu Dhabi came, and then we got fed up with Abu Dhabi. And then they elected Tumbra. Which one? Yeah. We elected Tumbra. And he was not a Dinka or a Nwab. Well. <laughs> Comes and bring Tumbra if they stand alone? No. no. And I tell you something, maybe I'm, my uncle will agree or not. The people of Will were like the swing state. Mm. Huh? True. True. Yeah. So anybody, or Florida, yeah. anybody that people of Will will go to will, will succeed. Florida. That was all the time in the policy of South Sudan. So everybody would go to Juba and say, have hey, people that will come? They say, no, they are not come. Say, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. <laughs> so they, they wait. When they come, Khalas is like a beautiful lady in the, in the town. They are like people of Wood. Where are they? Some were, were hidden. Some uh, uh, MPs used to be hidden because of bribery. And all these people seeking them. So they were the, 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 like a swing, a sing, swing state. Because they used to be the, the, the single majority in parliament. But also, none of them thought that, okay, if we are a swing state, why don't we propose our, our, uh, our candidate? No, nobody thought about that because. Nationalism <laughs> was there. <laughs> and this is what we want. Whether a minority or a majority, we should be nationalists. <laughs> Sum this up, you will find that it is Dinka. One Dinka only ruled the South before CPA. Abu Dhabi. Nuer never ruled the South during during the not CPA during the Addis Ababa agreement. The rulers, most of them came from from Equatoria. Even during the war, most of the governors or the, the, the president of South Sudan Council. Uh, during the war, this war, I mean the SPLA war, most of them were from Equatoria. James Loro, uh, the, the late ambassador. Yeah. You can count them. And then few from, yeah. from yeah. Up, up, up and Nile. Yeah. No Dinka rule during the, the, the 21st year. Uh, no Dinka rule South Sudan. The council of the South Sudan for whom there there was no thing that that, that the rule South Sudan. It was either from Equatoria or from Upper Nile, Nuer or Shudu. And most of them from Equatoria. Huh? No? Yeah. Uh, finish it. Uh, that will come in town. The only person that came from Bargazan was Gismala Abdallah Rasas, Italian period. And he's from Uwa. And you Gismala Abdallah Rasas, he's from Uwa. He's not a Dinka. So, I'm, I'm not advocating for Dinka on where I'm going, but we have to be straight. Because we said this conference, we can say straight the right? Yeah. So we have that history, good, it is good history that we need to learn from. That you can be a minority and you can rule South Sudan. You can be a majority and you can rule South Sudan. There's no single tribe that can say, I alone can rule South Sudan. If Dinka think that the majority can rule South Sudan, they are wrong. Because if others got us against them, they will be minority. 
Zeit in Höhe. Wir befinden uns hier in der Gürtel South Sudan, der Hund ist keiner Lohn, der Rathas, der ist der, der wird Minority. If a single tribe produces a good leader and we go after that person and he gets the majority, he will be, that tribe he becomes a majority. And this idea of we living as Dinkas, Equatorians, and Wef, and Yulu, and all this will not benefit us. Because if you live as a closed society, you are stuck. You are stuck, you don't have new ideas, you are stuck, you are not doing trade with anybody. So, for, say for instance, in, in Northern America, we will say, okay, we want to be just people who will. We are stuck with our cows, we are stuck with our uh, ground nuts, we are stuck with our sim sim, rice, no, no, nowhere to sell. But if we open up, we can sell. We can sell our rice, we can sell our cows, we can sell. We used to sell rice to Juba in 19. In, 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 uh, in the 80s, rice of Bawun used to be sent to Juba. Yes. So if we go back to produce rice and say, okay, just rice for ourselves, we are stuck with it. We will stuck even with our diseases. Mushina? Yes. 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 Because I'm just in a wee bus. I feel diseases if we, I know, I'm not a biologist, but, but God, if we intermarry for uh, that, that disease will become. We can, we can, we can. Genetics. Genetics. <laughs> and breeding. <laughs> and breeding. So we'll be stuck. And let me say something. In 1989, in 1983, when the South was divided to three regions, some left Juba, went to Wapanai, went to Baragazar, and those who were remained in Baragazar. The wealth is in the numbers. America is rich because of number. It's one example. Maybe other factors. When people were in Juba, a lot of, 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 of money was being consumed in Juba. And there was local government in Juba, and there was regional government in Juba. And NGOs were in Juba. <coughs> when the country was divided, what happened to Juba? Juba collapsed. collapsed. The same thing now for those who are saying, <coughs> let us uh, have our own state in, in Juba, and let the Dinkas, and Ver, and Julu, and Zandis go to their place. The advantage in Juba now, the population of Juba are working in two governments. They are working in the national government and they are working in the state government. And most of West, our wealth is consumed in, in Juba. And in general, in central Equatoria. I went to Kajukaji. As a minister, minister of trade, I went to the office of the uh, commissioner. commissioner told, the commission told me that they have in Kajikaji about 16 or 18 secondary schools. And I saw some of the secondary schools that are almost better than Jamajuba. This is a fact. In the structure where you see them, they are better than, than Jamajuba. And even some primary schools are better than some universities in Juba with all the swinging uh, children <laughs> playground and green uh, grass in the schools. <coughs> so, the stability in Equatoria is very important for the Equatorian people. And let those of Mubarak Ghazal and Upper Nile, the crazy people, kill themselves. <laughs> They are going back, they are not going forward. And the Equatorians are complaining, but in the future, Equatorians will be the leaders of this country. Because of what? Because of education. Look now, we have three professors. Where is the Dinka? There is no Dinka professor. <laughs> This is just in this 
four of them. Three or four of them did not attend because of other logistical problems. <laughs> so if I were a Kotorian, I would not complain. Peace. <laughs> You need peace, you already have peace, but you also want to exploit that peace you have. For reasons we don't know. When this, the war of SPLA, I went to London to do my master's degree in 2003. I found something called Equatorian Forum. That the Equatorial Forum <coughs> evolved around the idea that the movement, SPLA, is a Dinka, Dinka and Wear movement, and Wear Equatorial Forum. And the politicians who were running that Equatorial Forum are now the ministers in Juba. They left the Equatorial Forum and they are now in the SPLA in Juba. <laughs> Yeah. So let's encourage. 
our young people from Equatoria, from minorities, to join the National Army. This is when they, get, they will get represented. Those Equatorians who joined the National Army are now commanders. Like Wani is now a leader, historical leader. Thomas Cirino, Mamu, uh, a lot of them you can come with. A lot of them. A lot of them because they joined, they participated, and they got the right. And one of, one of them can possibly rule the South in the future. This is what we. Uh, we need. I uh, will go quickly uh, because I uh, I appreciate the present presentation of the professors. It is wonderful, and it is a dialogue. And I wish we had this kind of dialogue in Juba. Mm. But you fear that you will not survive. <laughs> Start from us, the diaspora. 
you trust each other. And this war, part of it, was fought through internet. So let's change our attitude. Let us be positive about this agreement. Let's are different politically, but not ethnically, but physically. You are here, you are in the best place in the world, you know how people differ, you know how people manage their differences. So let's continue to manage our differences in better atmosphere. So there will be challenges, because both of us have observations. Actually, when the rebels, I don't want to say something bad, when the rebels signed this agreement, they went to South Sudan delegation, government delegation, and told them that, look, this is a good peace agreement, go and sign it. Then the president was asked to come and sign this agreement. The president said, I cannot sign, let me go to Juba and consult. When he, go, when he went to Juba and signed the peace agreement, some became unhappy why the president signed this agreement. Yeah. 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 This is a confusion. You were the first to sign, and now you are saying this agreement is bad. And you have reservations. Okay. There are all have reservations. But these reservations should, be, should serve as a catalyst for us to move obstacles away on the road to implement peace agreement and arrive in the democratic South Sudan after three years of the implementation of peace agreement. The issue of central ban, yes, we know there are difficulties in central ban, but as I mentioned, there's no reserve. The reserve in central ban is very limited because of the oil uh, shutdown and revenues. Thank you. Because of the low revenues. That's why we have reserve uh, problems in South Sudan. So, Central Bank, Central Bank cannot do miracles if they don't have reserves. So let's uh, implement this peace agreement so that we go back to produce bigger oil and hopefully get better prices. Yes, Dr. Henry talked about our dream. Yes, South Sudanese. Yes, that dream. And our dream was since 1947, when the shifts of South Sudan said in Juba conference, and they said, we don't want the Sudan. We want to be alone. That was our ultimate goal. Chiefs actually were more nationalists than us today. They had a vision of South Sudan. This is very important. Uh, I don't think that the SPLA is a private army. Okay, it has not been transformed to the best professional army, but it is not a private army. This is an army that delivered South Sudan. And if it is an army that delivered South Sudan, it is not a private army. Yes. If the SPLA, <coughs> SPLA is not there today, my friend, let me tell you that South Sudan will be dismembered. <laughs> South Sudan will be dismembered. Because we have resources and the region is interested, interested in our resources. Those of uh, Unity, Northern Bargazal, and Apanai will become Dika of Sudan. Because we'll be taken by Sudan. If there is no force to guarantee that border, to stay like that. Other Kakwa and other places and all these will go to Uganda. Other East and South Sudan will go to Ethiopia and also to Congo. We will not have South Sudan without national army protecting the borders. He is one of the strongest army in the region. But if there are elements of that army, we need to sit down and reform it. 
There are still armies in the region that are still carrying the names of the liberation. UDPF, is it not an international army? But this army that brought uh, Musafir into power, and it still maintains that name. I think name is not a problem. The performance and the duty are the, the things that we need to, to do in the, in the SPL. We need a professional army. I think reconciliation and forgiveness is something all of us we need it so that we go forward. And I think if there is one person who has worked very hard, tirelessly for reconciliation and forgiveness, it is suffocated. Because when he came, he, convened, he also convened the South South dialogue that was uh, mentioned by, by uh, Uncle uh, David Bassoon. That was forgiveness and reconciliation and people coming together. And he brought in all the militias that were fighting against SPLA. <coughs> and actually, we should have had our independence in 1991. 1991, where just SPLA was just, it was just only Juba and de declare the independence. But the sad part was that we were not fighting the Sudan alone. We were fighting even our brothers in Juba and around Juba. There are some of them became governors in the, in the, in the SPLA, SPLM govern, government. Some, were, some of them became governors. Those who killed the SPLA soldiers, those who killed the, the southerners, brothers. I don't want to mention any yeah. <laughs> so that, This is the forgiveness of the SPLM and the forgiveness of the president. If that is a mistake, and then I don't know what, what is going to happen. So the same thing will apply now. There will be forgiveness, there will be reconciliation, there will be a lot of mechanism for com community to be reconciled, whether we use Rwanda, Rwanda style, the Shasha Michel. They had the issue of Gashasha, which is reconciliation mechanism. Rwanda. Rwanda, I mean, yeah, thank you. And also, other our own ways of, of, of the reconciliation. Hanging and killing because you kill somebody was not there in the history of South Sudan. I had this for my tribe. If I kill anybody, the blood will be paid with, 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 with cows. And it is certain. This is spirit of revenge and uh, going on and all these things was not there. Then it came with moder modernity. And we need, uh, and yeah, because modernity came and brought guns. And forgiveness, forgiveness comes from a strong person, not from a weak person. <laughs> when you are a strong person, you can forgive. And you forgive and you expect the other person to say, okay, if, uh, I have forgiven you as well. But if you continue, I cannot forgive and you cannot forgive, and then you go on and on and on and on. Somebody has to start that is spirit. And that is a strong person. So let us start here even in diaspora. I am still uh, reading that, okay, wait, when we go to, to Juba, you will see. It's still that, that environment is there, negative environment. Let's well go to Juba, you will see. Come to Juba, you will see. This is bad for us in the ice cream. Let's go to Juba and see good things. Let's go to Juba and consult how to form the new government. From the national uh, unity government at the state level, at the level, the, the Juba level, up to, up to more. Because rebels have to share in this government. And how will they share in this government if you don't go to Juba and consult in Juba? It will not happen. So let's go to Juba 
But all this crisis, it is we that are going to fix them. I was hearing somebody in, in this, uh, somebody in this uh, election saying that I will fix it. Which is Bush. Bush can fix it. Yeah. We can fix it. It is we who broke it, it is we who can fix it. You see that? Man, I only broke it. Then let's all fix it. And trust between our leaders must be there. That encourage self care and, 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 and self and uh to gonna move to have trust so that they can work together. When I was running for the elections in 2010, I was running against somebody. Actually, it's my relative. And what I was supported were neck on neck, neck on neck. They hated each other and all these things. When the elections were over, I won. When I won, the guy came and greeted me and said, Congratulations. And then the rest said, Now, why were you fighting? Now they are laughing. We laughed, I was laughing with the guy that I beat. But our supporters were still fighting. fighting. Why are they fighting? So they said, no, these guys are fooling us. <laughs> so they have to continue to fight. You will see some Fakir and Reh Bashar and Pogana Moon laughing in Juba. You come to the ministers. And you are still, you still fighting here. <laughs> When I met Mr. Riyad for the uh, first time after he had rebelled and those of them are law and all these things in the State Department, we hugged our, each other and there was, uh, the, the State Department staff were surprised, these are rebels and government. <laughs> <laughs> and why are we here? So this is the spirit we need. So let us not uh, uh, start in a negative campaign, you are a militia, you are a word, and all these things. And uh, like, uh, like Matthew Manu, actually Matthew Manu was recruited by Rick Machar. Let me tell you this, Matthew Manu was recruited by Rick Machar. How? When we had a fight in the in Iglik, I was the Minister of Petroleum. And then the President formed National Committee for Mobilization. I was given a task, <coughs> Of mobilizing food, food for the for the recruits. Rick Machar was our boss, and in the in 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 the John Garang Mozolio, when we called the public, we called the public. Rick Machar called for river news to go to 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 Medad, to go to the, to the to training centers. That video, video it is there. The only place where people went to center was. Uh, Northern Bargazal and uh, people went from Mumbai and some went from from uh, Wara. This is how Matamanyor came. They were in the, in the in, in, in place called Nyongleal in the center. And who recruited them? Did they me and Reh Bashar? I was giving them food. Reh Bashar was my political leader. They had to go to court. This is how Matamanyor came in. Matamanyor was not recruited by anybody. It was prepared for any event fight that might take place between us and the North. That's how the, the Matamanyor came in and they gave themselves that, that name. Actually, that name I heard it after, after they came to Juba. I didn't hear about, know about that name before. They gave them, themselves a the name in, in, the, in, the, in, in the training uh, <coughs> yeah, the songs. So it was. Victoria was recruited them. And in the African Union report, if you read it, he will testify, he will find that he testified that he knows how these people were recruited. He, he, he said yes, he knew. But for political reasons, we are saying this man is militia and that person is militia. Anyway, let me conclude here by uh, thanking you for being patient to listen to my contribution. I hope it makes a uh, Meaning, and let us continue uh, to have this kind of dialogue. I know that there is a problem of resources, but if all of us work together and dish our hands 
our pockets, I think we can raise resources for this kind of workshops or meetings in other places. We in the embassy uh, will be there for you. We are open up, whether you are in opposition or we are in government. Actually, there is no opposition now. All of us are in, in the government. Even I would have afraid too much better. We are all in the, in the, in the government. And in Russia, he started to recognize, to, to write uh, vice president, first vice president, the executive, right? Then he sort of accepted the, the, the position. And I will respect him as my new leader. He's my boss. So thank you very much uh, for listening uh, to me. And I hope that we'll meet again in this kind of interactions in the future. Thank you very much. Now